one of the greatest text. You know, we on the West when we say choiceless awareness, uh, meditation here and now, instant meditation. So all these words were coined from this text. So this text emphasizes on understanding. And understanding of what? Understanding of our real nature. So understanding of our real nature, first it means I have to study uh, the Eastern wisdom, what is my real self and what is not my real self. But in order to study, I have to become a seeker. See that? So in order to become a seeker, this master in the first chapter uh, has, uh, the seeker has asked the three questions. Do you remember the three questions when we started? So how the dispassion is attained? One of the most important qualifications in the journey of awakening and meditation. On Mondays and Thursdays we will understand deeply what exactly is this passion. Patanjali also talks. So he asked directly the question, how this passion is attained? So when you, you have that level of this passion, which is a state of the mind, in that state of the this passion, the master gives the knowledge of the real self. So when you live at the highest level of this passion and the master is giving you the knowledge, at the same time the meditation is also happens. Meditation also takes place. This is what the uh, summary of it. So in the very first chapter, the master explains the very nature of real self. We have 20 verses in the in the first chapter so he explains what exactly is the nature of the real self you know sometimes people get upset if i give their stories but i will not tell you the name so one student who used to receive lessons from me and then came the lesson on dispassion so normally in uh, the literal teaching, it what they say, uh, teaching is about renunciation, detachment, understanding the mind within. So I taught them that, you know, all. So what he did, he went to his house and told his wife that I'm totally detached. Don't talk to me. So I'm now a monk. So his wife called me later. Sir, what did you teach him? He says that he is detached. So I was talking of the internal detachment in order to remove the wrong notion. But he took it, you know, and then... So it is very... Uh, that is why we need to become a seeker. So as we understand after the 20th verse, if you have understood it clearly and if you, your intellect has absorbed the understanding, then what happens in the next chapter? Huh? The seeker narrates his experiences. So you have to align with the seeker whether you live into that state or you are not living into that state. So let us take the 19th verse. Yathaiv, Yathaiv adarshamadhyasthe rupen ta paristattu tathevasmin sarirante paritah parameshwara. So if I literally translate, it means just as a mirror, 
exists within and without the image reflected in it. I think you get it. So the real self exists inside and outside this body. He makes a very bold statement. He says, the, I, what is the idea in it? The image is in the mirror has no real existence. It appears and it disappears. No real existence. It is a reflected image. Huh? So it is merely it is merely an appearance. So only the mirror exists. Exist. So he says, Tathaivasman, similarly, only the real self exists. Body, mind have no real existence. But you know those people who are not a seeker, who do not understand what it means by the real and the unreal, huh? they will leave studying this, they will stop the practice. So real existence and unreal existence means, the real existence means the thing and object remains as it is. Their time does not influence, the space does not influence. But the body is influenced by the time, body is influenced by the shape. So that is what we are talking of, the unreal and the real existence. So what he says, they have no real, it is only by being superimposed on the self that they appear to exist. Just as the reflection cannot affect the mirror, so the body, mind cannot affect, influence, dictate the self. Now, if you relate this uh, verse with the state of dispassion, the mind is living into the state of dispassion, uh, the moment sense organ perceives mind experiences anything in the world outside. The intellect instantly, without thinking, separates the real from the unreal. In that state, meditation takes place. This is what the master says. So if we go back and if we uh, have, uh, if we pick up a couple of the verses, so the master has given many practices. He said in the beginning, object. Outside is like a poison. Poison, huh? it restricts awakening, it prevents a meditative state. It means whatever I see, if that object creates an attachment, passion, then it is a poison. It doesn't mean that I see you, you are a poison to me, and you see me that I am a poison to you. So until we are a seeker, we cannot understand that. So what he says, then what happens? There is one process that we should cultivate forgiveness, kindness, straightforwardness huh? by discernment and dispassion. We can reach to that state. Another practice, huh, which I always love, yadi deham prathakratya chiti vishram metishthasi. You are in the field of awareness when the mind moves inside, leaves the body in the state of dispassion and the mind continues to live within. That is, that leads to instant peace and happiness. We all experience in a deep sleep. Body is not there, mind is not there. But can we bring the sleeping state at the conscious level where the body and the mind is not there? We are already into the meditative state. Then in another verse, he says, dispassion by discernment that we are none of these objects which is seen, felt, experienced by the sense organ in the mind. Can I withdraw myself? That is the uh, what he means, uh, the withdrawal. Or there is another way that he explains neither the doer nor the enjoyer. 
because the ego builds over it and that ego prevents uh, the witness consciousness. Now he says what he says about the mirror. So he equates the mirror as the real self. Any image is reflected in the mirror. Any image. Huh? Any image is reflected in the mirror inside or not reflected. What happens to the mirror inside or outside? Nothing happens to the mirror. So what happens to the, my real self? The body has lot of challenges. Mind is upset, but nothing happens to that real self. Can we reach to that state of dispassion? Relate to the three questions the seeker asked. How the dispassion is attained? First question, how the knowledge of the real self is attained? And then he asked, how the freedom, awakening or liberation is attained. So he is answering huh, in the 19th verse. Then why to practice with eyes closed when we have a state of dispassion? That the next question comes, the real meditation or when we reach to the highest state of meditation, we need not to close our eyes. We remain in the state of dispassion. So, two things, dispassion and the knowledge of the real self is clear and in that state you are, your eyes are open and still you live into that state of meditation 24 by 7. Now, so how to understand it? Uh, two famous examples are given. One famous example by all the masters. <clears throat> pot. Uh, you take a pot, the space inside the pot <clears throat> and the space outside the pot. Are there, are we, do we have two spaces or only one space? The space inside this room and the space outside. Well, that is how the master of the Eastern Wisdom teaches us. So, are there two? <coughs> uh, for transactional reality, there are two. I am outside the home. I am inside the home. But in reality, the space is one. In reality, the space is one. <coughs> so, what is that thing which created the space? which created the two space, outside and inside. It is the wall. So this wall is the body. The real self is inside and the same real self is also outside. This is what the master is saying. <coughs> you see the initial teaching of the Eastern wisdom, <coughs> non-violence means the way I love myself I should be loving others. So that is the primary teaching. So here is the what is the highest teaching? Real self is present everywhere. The same real self that is within me, that is also in you. It is the same. It is only one. So when the tongue is hurt by the teeth, we do not punish the teeth. Same way, even if the mind feels the hurt from others, huh, we do not punish. That is where the non-violence comes. It is not, you know, preaching non-violence that doesn't work in yoga. It is beyond morality and ethics. So now come to the same example. So... So, the space inside the house and the space outside is one. So, should I, should I break the wall to see the space is one? Or the knowledge should happen in the head? Knowledge should happen in the head. When it happens, when there is a dispassion. 
how the dispersion takes place when there is a discernment. What is discernment? That through the intellect, we understand what is real and what is unreal. And how do we practice discernment? By thinking. But if my thoughts is not focused, for clarity and understanding, hence that we have to gain the focus, we have to remove the impurity of the mind. And what is the impurity of the mind? The wrong notions. That is why we should study uh, these principles of Eastern wisdom. Normally, we say from a teacher. Now, going back to the same Ah, verse. What he says, he gives an example of a mirror. Reflection is in the mirror. Mirror is present within and outside the reflected image. He gives one of the greatest principles here. The moment I see my body, the real self is a mirror, reflecting this body. As you stand before the mirror, you see your reflected image. You leave the mirror, no reflected image. Now compare this it with the body. That real self, that pure consciousness, that choiceless awareness. Call it a mirror. What it is reflecting, the moment you say, this is my body, body is reflecting in that. This is not you. The way you see the reflected image in the mirror is not you. The same way in the real self, this body is reflecting as an image. It is not you. It can only be achieved when we live at the highest state of dispassion. This is what the Master is saying. So, uh, so what he says, Yathaiva, Yathaiva darshamadhyaste rupenta paritastu tasa, Tathaiva asmin sharirante paritaha parameshwaraha. So he says, he uses the word supreme self. So now he is equating the real self as the supreme self. Huh? He is using the word Parameshwaraha. Parameshwaraha. Yeah. yeah. So he says that only the self exists. Why the self exists? What is the goal of meditation? I want to find out the ultimate reality. What is that ultimate reality? The real self. So then when he says the only the self exists, means what? It is all pervading. One pure consciousness that alone exists. Body being superimposed on the self that they appear to exist. The last point, if you contemplate daily before going into meditation. In the entire, every master explains the reality or the things and objects of the world in three categories. They put it into three categories. Normally in the West, we put I into two categories. One category is the truth. The other is untruth. So when we say the truth, it is all pervading, it is ever present, it is not influenced by the time and the space and the causation. Like space cannot be divided, like consciousness cannot be broken. Now see, when I say I do not exist, it is only through the consciousness I can say I cannot deny consciousness. And I say, I 
am conscious, I exist, we cannot deny consciousness. We cannot refute it. That is what the truth is all about. So then this, uh, our masters explain in between untruth. My master used to say, elephant is flying in the sky. It is untruth. Totally untruth. How can the elephant fly? But then in between the two, there comes the third, which we say as a false. But the right word is mithya. Mithya. How to define the mithya? That appears true, but it is not true. That appears true, but not true. How come? The water in the mirrors appears true, but it is not true. Because of the desire in the world, mind is running outside all the time, like I am chasing a mirrors. I am chasing the water in the mirrors. So when the mind is attached to these objects of the senses, the mind runs into the mithya, which appears true, but it is not true. So what is the understanding of that, what appears true? In this week, if you contemplate, the moment any object enters into your mind, you start evaluating, reason it, what it means, what appears true, but it is not true. Simple understanding is that, that appears true means body appears true. I am the body for all practical purposes. But am I really the body? So the body appears true as if I am the body, but I am not. The blueness of the sky will continue to be seen to me, but still we are 100% clear the sky is not blue. We are 100% clear the wave is not the water, the storm is not the water, the essential nature of the water is different from the wave, the storm and the flood and the ocean. Similarly, a we real self, that real self is different from what appears true in our daily life. Can I put the intellect to sit into that state? It can only be achieved by the dispassion. Dispassion is achieved by the discernment and discernment thought process by which we separate real from the unreal. But if we cannot do it because the mind interferes, then follow Patanjali Yoga. The highest yoga directly go into meditation, but you cannot go into that. Then practice asana, pranayama, mantra, law, kundalini, etc., etc. So it becomes a long journey. So here he says it is a direct journey. So let us start our practice of meditation. Now, based on this teaching today, eyes are closed. In this meditation, we are not doing anything. And still we do something. But there is no doer. That is the key. Eyes are closed. Naturally, you close your eyes. Closing the eyes is symbolic expression of what? It is a symbolic expression of that now these sense organs are not running after any object. And then you look at the body. So when I say look at the body, feel the body, become aware of the body, are you doing anything? Awareness of, awareness of anything is not doing anything. Become aware of the body, feel the body, look at the body. So when you simply look at the body in the field of awareness, you find a sense of steadiness in the body. And at the same time, eyes are gently closed. And with that eyes closed, you are looking inside. 
you are looking inside. Why you are looking inside? So there are two ways of looking. You are looking in the state of dispassion. What is going to happen? The body will become steady. It will remain steady. You are looking inside in the state of a dispassion, discernment. That is what the master is saying. So seeker is of the highest order and the master is also of the highest order in this teaching. I am just passing on the knowledge to you. I am a catalyst. So being comfortable looking at the neck joint, again you simply look at the neck joint. You are aware. In the field of awareness, when you look at the neck joint, the mind experiences sensation, being comfortable and steadiness. What is behind? And, or if I say what is beyond? Experience of sensation, being comfortable and steadiness. There is only a space. There is no two spaces. The space is all pervading. It is only one. In fact, we moved from the outer space to inner space. And in between, we found the mithya, the false, that is creating a barrier, division, duality. You see, we are progressing. I added one more aspect. Move the mind on the shoulder joints. Be there. Where? On the shoulder joints. How can I know the? there is no... Uh, the sky is not blue? I look at the blueness of the sky, sky and I become aware of the knowledge inside. Are we doing the same thing? Yes. And that doing is not a practice. It is in the field of non-practice. So looking at the shoulder joint, being there. So mind says, no, very good. I experience sensation, being comfortable and steadiness. So you are aware of the both. You are neither the mind. You are not the sensation. You are not the comfort. You are not the steadiness. It belongs to the body and the mind. See that? And then the mind says, okay. Then it becomes aware of the space and the space is inside and outside. There is no inside and outside. It is one space. Those who have been attending classes regularly, they know how I tweak. I think uh, it is known as tweaking. So become aware of all the joints in the body. You see, we started the journey from the joints of the body. Then mental experience of sensation being comfortable and steadiness. At the same time, there is an awareness that the body and the mind are constantly changing. Whatever is changing can never be me. So the mind settles into the space inside. Naturally. Why? In the state of dispassion, we have an intense aspiration to know who am I. See that. It is not in forced stillness. It is natural stillness. It is the stillness that we experience because of the state of dispassion and awareness. What the state of dispassion in the intellect says, body is a matter, cannot move, hence it remains still. What is in forced stillness? The mind is trying to keep the body steady, holding it, forcing it, making an effort and still. Do you see the difference? One is 
primary practice, the other is higher practice. Now being carefree. What is carefree? Again, the, the dispassion in the intellect separates the seer from the seen. And that I simplify by saying, thoughts are coming, thought, thought continues to stay, thought leaves us feeling images, all the experiences taking place in the mind. But I am not the mind. No, no, but what to do? The mind always asks. Not to do, just become aware who is the knower of all the thoughts, all the experiences. So the moment you introduce that there is a knower and there is a known that is what the being carefree is. And that I used to simplify. You see the ripples on the water on the surface of an ocean. Deep inside, there are no ripples, there are no waves. So, in our tradition, one master says it is a deeper mind. It is a witness mind. Other master says you separate knower from the known. Both are okay. So what we are doing, we are in fact doing nothing. We are, the, it is like standing across a road and watching the traffic. Simple. So we are simply sitting across a road or standing across a road watching the traffic. Similarly, you are watching the traffic of the thoughts in the mind. And who is watching? You are aware of that. Knower, seer. That is the meaning of being carefree. So, let us move to the highest level of seeker and then we will go to another step. So what we are doing for that, looking at the head and the neck. Keep looking at the head and the neck. Or if I say, move the mind on each and every cell of the head and the neck. So when the mind naturally moves there, you experience sensation, relaxation and stillness. But that is an experience in the mind. What is beyond that? The space from where we started the journey. The space. The space cannot be divided. Can I break the delusion of the body and the mind and the experiences? Because everything is present in the space. I'm tweaking again today. That is it. Right arm. You see, we start with an object. What is object? The right arm. The mind is moving. Then we move to the second object. What is that? The experience, sensation, relaxation and stillness. And then move beyond in the space. Just become aware if the space cannot be divided, let the mind go to that state, that awareness. Left arm space, but in between the space we experience sensation, relaxation and stillness. I'm giving the practice as if I'm talking to you, so that it does not appear to the mind as if we are practicing anything. So the very practice becomes the non-practice. You live and work in the field of awareness chest in the valley, the middle portion of the valley. You are aware, 
you see to it, you feel it, you experience sensation, relaxation and stillness. And beyond that, you add into that space. Right leg. Sensation, relaxation and stillness. And what is beyond it is the space. From where we started the journey in the space, from the space. Now we started the journey, you can say, your mind can say, and there you miss the point. I can only recognize any object in the world with the space all around. If there is no space, how can I recognize any object? Do you see that? So when we live into the state of dispassion, it becomes a play and a fun for us. So look at the left leg. It is confined. The space is all around there. Without the space, I cannot recognize See, simple thing, not very complex. How can I recognize my house and your house? It is confined. That is, that is why it is an object. I see you, it is an object. Why? I see your body. But still it is confined within the space, left leg. And that leads us to experience of sensation, relaxation and stillness, casual walking. You are walking as if you are doing a morning walk with me. Mind is walking. Especially in Saturday's journey, I hate to say that it is a practice. But we have to continue until we live into the same state all the time. And sensation, relaxation, stillness in the left leg and the space. We land it up into the space again. The entire body from the top of the head to the toes. So recognize the entire body as an object in the space. What happens if we don't live into the state of dispassion? Then uh, the mind deeper inside says, Okay, go ahead. I am the body. So the change must come come within. We normally try to change and show the change outside. Nothing will happen. I'm not saying, all the masters are saying. So become aware of the body. And entire body. You see, Again, I'm comparing. You see the sky is blue. You see the body is here. In the state of dispassion, you are aware that object. It is an object and I see the space. When you have a passion, you are already attached to the body. Who is creating an attachment? The mind. Intellect says good. The master says, very good, you are living in delusion. Simple. And in that state, you experience sensation, relaxation and stillness. What is beyond that? Again, I'm stressing, tweaking. In today's meditation, there is only a space. 
the mind returns to the body, but after all, but and if doesn't do not exist here. When you are in the state of dispassion, huh, then there is no water in the mirrors. So there is no but and if. You know, I know. Our mind starts questioning why? Because it is attached. So now we will go a little further in a different way. We will find the knower, the seer, the experiencer. So become aware of the world outside the body. Is there a space outside the body? Yes. The space is confined, which I say is the room in which I am meditating? Yes. In that room we have lot of articles, objects. Just become aware of them. In this meditation, we live into that state of dispassion. We don't say leave the object. So become aware of all the objects. At the same time, become aware who is the knower of all the objects. For the sake of understanding, I say it is purely the physical mind. When the mind recognizes any object in the world outside, which is purely physical, I refer it to as a physical mind because mind in the sense organ merges together and recognizes an object. Only the sense organs can have the name and the form and the shape and the color and the sound of the world. Now let us go a little deeper. Become aware of the body from the top to the toes. We say it is a physical body. But the mind in passion, in attachment, in clinging, says body is alive. Can you show me any matter which is alive? No matter is alive. Matter means inert. And inert means what? Inert means that object which is inert cannot know itself and cannot know others. It is not conscious. But I feel the body is conscious. It is because of the attachment passion, clinging. Can the iron bar can ever be hot and red? Yes, when the fire is there and fire and heat is there. Otherwise, the natural state of the iron bar is neither hot nor red. So this hot and the red in the body is our consciousness. So now I discover. Let us go a little deeper. So looking at the breath only. Looking at the breath that is moving. Who knows it? It is the subtle mind. The subtle mind. So, see, you see that? The quality of a knower has changed. The way we see the object, the phys body of one, and the way we see the other person is loving me. For example, are different. Then our 
awareness is on the expression same way subtle mind is looking at the breath now what is deeper than the breath all of our experiences in the mind in terms of the thoughts feeling pain pleasure duality conflict everything any experience is happening in the mind so it is who notes that it is the subtler mind you see that you know i categorize for the sake of understanding physical mind with reference to the world physical mind with reference to the body physical subtle mind with reference to the breath subtler mind with reference to the all the experiences taking place in the mind one thing you should be clear any experience knowledge either of the pain and the pleasure duality and the conflict happens in the mind and who recognizes that there is a subtler mind for the sake of understanding i'm using this word so that you can go deeper to so just look at it and and <clears throat> what is let us move deeper and uh, find out what is behind all these thoughts and experiences you do it by awareness and knowledge let us find out the sky is not blue i have seen the blueness of the sky exactly the same thing so either what happens we find the sky so what is behind all these thoughts and feeling and sensations the mind cannot enter into that state so we say it is an objectless i see the blankness i see the emptiness so when the knower is aware that's emptiness this is what people talk a lot about it choiceless awareness in the state of delusion or which i explained you the three types huh one is truth other is untruth and the third is in between so where there is a change where there are two there is bound to be a delusion means what that appears true but not true but when there is nothingness so there is a choiceless awareness simple simplified way now with that understanding the intellect is clear it is living into that state of emptiness with clarity and understanding so even if some thought appears and disappears 
it does not make a difference to my state. You see, when that happens, that you live into that state, Yathaiva adarsha madhyasthe rupinta paritastu sa tathaiva asmin sharirante paritah parameshwarah Reflected. So whatever appears as dual division, is a reflected image and we are Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Bring your mind on the right hand, your mind on the left hand. Lift your both the palms, place it on your eyes, open the eyes inside. Know your experiences and bring the hands down. We did nothing. Or we can say still we did something. How are you, David and Jerry? <laughs> I, um, you always ask me first, but it takes a minute to kind of wake up. But uh, <laughs> uh, it was very, um, it was it was kind of like different levels of letting go, both physically and mentally. Sure. And as, as that was occurring, more clarity um, in terms of uh, clean mind was present. So by the end of it, it was like everything was blank. Like there was no thought, there was no feeling, there was no concept of time, nothing. But it was various stages of Stage. letting go that I really enjoyed. Beautiful. That is why Master says we have to study, we have to be regular. So because of the regular practice, we move into that. It's a beautiful. How are you, Jerry? Very good. It was a very quiet, um, just steady. Steady. Steady throughout. Just a lot of space and, um, and no real concept of time. Beautiful. How are you, Anne? You have to unmute. I see your <laughs> lips moving. 
<laughs> yeah, I, uh, I forgot. I, I stayed with it all the time, and I found there were lots of concerts you brought up. Which, <laughs> <laughs> so, which is good. Nothing <laughs> <laughs> to do until the next week. <laughs> Yeah, one has to be regular to pick up these concepts. But one thing we should be very clear in the Eastern wisdom, we start with a concept to remove the delusion of the mind. And once the delusion is removed, throw all the concepts into the garbage. <laughs> because the real self can is not a concept. It is a reality. Do you see? And the science cannot throw any concept into garbage because the application will become null. That is the dif biggest difference. Huh? Do you understand? Science cannot get away with the concept. And the finest example is that if I say uh, your famous example that was pre proved wrong. Which philosopher who says, I think, therefore I am? No, I am, therefore I think. <laughs> so that I am is not a concept. So, but we have to use concept. That is how the mind and the intellect works. How are you, Terry? Very interesting. Very good. Uh, there were a lot of concepts, and I went very far into that. And uh, I started wondering about each thing, like I you know, was about the every cell. If you go in every cell, in every cell, there's motion, even if they're still. And then I got a question about that, like how could that be? <laughs> and then I was seeing that, I was thinking that uh, also that if the space is one, then, then we, like we don't exist. <laughs> only, <laughs> yeah, like, only. Between us and the space, if it's one thing, then we don't exist. It is only one thing. That is why we exist, because I recognize that one thing. Okay. Yeah, I guess it's the yeah, <laughs> It, it is not. I was wondering, then why does everybody look different from everybody else? Why don't we all look the same? <laughs> yes, look yes, the same. yes, yes. So who says that we look different? Well, like individuals. Like, like individuals. Who, says we, who says we look individual? Like I have a friend that was an identical twin. <laughs> but he's a total apart. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> and he's a total apart. Yeah, she is going to. <laughs> Today yeah, so she I is mean, very happy. I... I <laughs> <laughs> Daddy, you are very happy. No, we are not talking of identical in the twins. We are questioning the authority of that who question, who says there are, we are looking different. Who says we are looking different? Mind. How the mind says we are looking different? Through the sense organs. Can the sense organs see the reality? The answer is no. Drop it. Can the mind find the reality? No. Drop the mind. So when you drop the mind, you drop the sense organ, you drop the different color, shape, sizes, height, weight of the different individual. We don't even say two people are identical. We say they are not two, there is only one. And because you recognize that one is existence, consciousness and bliss. Oh, we will take up the 20th verse. There is something more. More. How are you, Sam? <laughs> Very good. Quite interesting. 
I'm uh, I'm really good as well. Um, I think the the layers were were good again today. Um, you know, with the again the the body check escaping the the physical part of the mind and focusing on the breath. Um, and as I had mentioned, I guess a few times my experience when I'm when I'm at the I guess the deepest level is that I'm not even paying attention to my breath anymore because it's so effortless with in and out, you know, in and out of my body. And, you know, I kind of feel more one with the whatever space is outside. So I guess that that kind of goes to what you were talking about. But I guess I noticed the body first and then the breath and then you know, for the rest of it, and, and where it felt so effortless is when I'm not even paying attention to my breath anymore. It's kind of just happening. Effortless and so. calmness was there. Effortless. This calmness, steadiness. Yes, that is good. That is the importance of doing the regular practice. Beautiful, Sam. How are you, wife? Have It was really comfortable and like <clears throat> now it's like I can be settled inside myself and then it will be like very smooth, thoughtless, flawed uh, state and then it was very calm inside. Good, 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 very good. That's a good state. How are you, Ashok? Sir, it is very uh, um, peaceful and blissful. Peaceful and blissful. That's good. That's good. Now we have to ask the last question to ourselves that we have achieved, we have experienced, we have known that state. Are we living into that state 24 by 7? That is our goal. Huh? You see, Sam, Webhaven. That is our goal. So it means we keep our mind or we maintain that awareness of our destination that can I live into that state. So what is what will happen? Now just after meditation, you remind the mind that is your goal. What is going to happen? the mind will definitely run after the objects of attachment. You know, someone says, you know, I had a good friend uh, in New Jersey, so I used to give him meditation. So after the meditation, you know, he never noticed. I'm just talking. I'm also not telling the name. So he said, uh, he used to tell me Acharya. He has to do with something with the mod gaze and knows it. So anyhow, so Acharya, uh, just after the meditation, before telling me about his experiences, I know Acharya, you love coffee. Can I have a cup of coffee? It means in your entire meditation, <laughs> that impression continued. Uh, do you understand what I'm saying? That impression continued. So check after the meditation. Is the mind <laughs> moving? Now, he was saying out of love and respect. But in meditation, we have <laughs> nothing to do with these two things. <laughs> there is nothing out of love and respect. <laughs> it is, I'm looking at the state. So he knows that what I love, what I cherish to eat, and then he used to cook himself. No, no. So you have to check just after meditation. Do you live into that state? As Sam was explaining, I live into that state. So when you continue to live into that state, you recognize whether the mind is going up and the mind is going down. The mind is going into the passion or mind is moving ahead or mind is going deeper. That will take you deeper into that state. So that is all for today. Any question?